viewers, with this presupposition that the society is changing from simple to complex, it is changing from agrarian, rural to urbanized and industrialized. The society is also changing from pre-modern to modern up to postmodern. In the 21st century, we can only speak about the postmodernity. That is the time that precedes the modern time. And it is a question of what it entails or it envisages. It entails a lot of sophistication, a lot of complexity, also in our socio-economic relationships, in our cultural relationships, in our civil relationships, and also in our political relationships. The social order, the legal order, the economic order, political order, and also the environment, all keep on changing as human mentality also keeps on changing. Criminals also keep on changing day by day. Our topic today rather is about reoffending. Reoffending simply means that same person, same conduct, and one person, one criminal, carrying repeatedly similar crime. And the explanation about this is very unclear indeed when it comes to our legislative disposition and judicial opinions keep on varying. What is substantive in this matter is that the law might not have answers to all human questions. It is not indeed very simple and easy to understand an individual that has been declared or has rather declared himself or herself a serial killer or a serial rapist. These are things that sometimes uh, a reasonable human being in the society may be scared from carrying out. However, still the sophistication of our complex pluralistic metropolitan societies or life in the cities come up with sophistication also in criminology, in understanding the professional crimes and professional criminals. Those are criminals that have taken crimes as their means of livelihood, but also perhaps as their personal passion and satisfaction. The Republic of Kenya in 2010 was shocked by the case of charges against Mr. Philip Onyancha in criminal cases and allegations against him. The prosecution charged him of having murdered so many individuals, and in this case, more than 18 persons, mostly women, and he raped so many and sodomized so many, and his character was dubious. His behavior was dubious. What is so shocking is that Mr. Philip Ondara Onyancha, born in Kericho in 1978, was living a normal life. He was a family man and a father, but he was a criminal. And this was declared in his evidence of recorded video in which he declared himself in a confession as a serial killer. He self-confessed serial killer. In this confession, Mr. Nyancha admits the knowledge of such killings. He admits that indeed he killed so many people, 
especially the mentioned victims. He also allows us to understand that he was not aware of what is happening, of, of what was happening to him at the time he was committing such crimes. It was like a passion, but it was a crime. He also allows us to understand that he was sane and he could understand the proceedings and the charges against him. He could again follow the proceedings, understanding that what he did was indeed against the law. It was a violation. However, what is shocking in this confession, Mr. Ndari admits and claims that he acted under the power of the spirits, the forces of the underworld, use of the spirits, certain religion, cults, occult, or certain belief systems that can as well within quotes make somebody do some kind of hyenas crime and seek the justice system of how to get away with such crimes in the judicial systems. This was not easy as presented in criminal case number 38 of 2010 in which Justice Lesit ruled as follows that the video presentation of cell confessions by the accused is inadmissible or inadmissible in the court. This again couples with part of his orders that this would be a parallel jurisdiction. That means it is not the ordinary and judicial jurisdiction in which such powers, the use of demons, the use of evil spirit, the use of underworld could be used or could be admitted as evidence in the court of law, at least in the Republic of Kenya. The court sentenced Mr. Onyancha for 12 years in maximum prison. And this has not been the end of the entire story. This case has created a basis for so many debates, so many legal research, so many heart-thumbing questions among Kenyans and non-Kenyans, among jurists and legal scholars, professors of law, simply because citing the evil spirits, the demons, or devil worshipping, or things to do with masonry, freemasonry, is for the first time being cited as the cause that has compelled the alleged defendant to commit such capital offense that would equally attract capital punishment and in this case the maximum punishment may be death penalty or may be life imprisonment however mr philip ondara onyancha was put on a lesser charge of 12 years imprisonment just because simply the court could not relate him to the action, could not relate him to the cause of the death of such persons. The defendant in his account claims that he cannot understand or tell how these victims were dying, but he can clearly remember holding the hand of the victim and only to realize the victim was no more dead. Who on earth can use forensic 
experiments, forensic evidence, jury metrics, and all the analysis based on science to establish the facts and establish the relationship between the accused and the crime that is alleged. It is again in this perspective that we see the work of the psychology of the court. We see the use of expert testimony in terms of medical experts, those who are knowledgeable of the human health, the physical health, those who are knowledgeable and professionals of mental health, psychiatrists, and those who are knowledgeable of science such as DNA test or the use of exhibits to test and detect the connection between the accused and the alleged crime. This is what I would call the cracks of the judicial system, the cracks of law, and we need hereby say with affirmation, quote unquote, that the judicial system, at least under common law system, is not prepared to deal with the questions of spirits or beliefs in religion or certain creeds. This is still a gray area of law or dark area of law, if you wish. However, still it is a call for legal researchers, for academics, law scholars, law professors, writers, judicial authority, practitioners, attorneys in criminal offenses to revisit and restudy the criminal justice, retributive justice, corrective justice under the context of the contribution given by non-lawyers or professionals from other works of academic life. It is in this perspective, my dear viewers, that we want to develop a sound and credible intellectual debate and putting our minds to understand already known sophisticated concepts, even in the area of criminology, in the area of penology, in the area of correctional justice, in the area of retributive justice. And it is in this formatting that I do admit that Mr. Onyancha's case is a case study. It makes a huge contribution in the jurisprudence in the Republic of Kenya and especially in the criminal justice. Thank you for watching, Peter here. I still encourage you to follow up and I ask you to read the Criminal Procedure Code of the Republic of Kenya, Chapter 75 of the Laws of Kenya, especially Section 162 and Section 166 on Lunacy Trial. Thank you for watching and bye for now.